Today we're going to start off with the basic snap. Everybody learned this. We've all been, you know, everybody will teach you, 50 different people will teach you 50 different ways to throw a snap. Here's how I throw mine, here's why I throw mine the way I do. Typically everybody's going to stand at the Pell, at optimal Pell range, I've gauged my dank range, and I've thrown. They're very good about staying behind their shield, they decouple their shoulders. You generate the force, you generate the force off of your hips, knees, ankles, up to your shoulders, out into the arm, you throw the force. You aim six inches deep into your opponent rather than just touching the surface. Otherwise, you just smack the surface and come off quickly. There's a lot of different returns you can use. You use what I was originally shown, in theory developed by Duke Paul, because your arm stays safe. Do a lot of guys just bring it up onto the shoulder. Bring it up on their shoulder. Bring it up on their shoulder. You can bring it into a Molinet and throw off of the Molinet. However you do the return is irrelevant for now. What you need to use is the snap to set up other things. One of the things I like to do, go ahead and get in the hanging guard. When you get somebody old school who's in a melee, I'm stopping pole arm from coming down like this, you can use their shield and their sword to aim your shot right up inside. So it's the same angle, it's the same shot, but I'm bringing it up rising into that target gap. I can literally bounce it off his sword into his head. All right, go ahead and switch into an A-frame. Same shot, same way of generating the force, right into the arm. It's a snap, it's the same exact motion. I just steer it differently, I get into his arm. You can do all kinds of different things with that, but it's fundamentally a snap. I can be at extreme range when I'm fighting Sylvester, and I can throw a snap at extreme range, I can get really close to Sylvester, and if I lean back, I can throw the same snap. You need to be able to do all those things. I can even get at extreme range. Here I'm where I'm many feet away from Sylvester. I'm going to throw the same motion, elicit the same reaction, and bring it into a thrust. When I throw it in, he sees a snap right inside. And that's why you don't stand at pell work. You don't stand at your pell at the same distance every time and throw the exact same shot. Because even if you throw it perfectly, you're teaching your body how to throw the same shot 10,000 times. You need to be versatile. You're trying to develop how to develop force and how to steer it where you want it to go. There's a couple of other fine nuances you have to keep in track, keep in mind when you throw a snap. I was taught the analogy of smelling the soup. You have a bowl of soup, you're smelling it, you're handing it to your opponent. You're taking the soup, you're smelling it, you're handing it to your opponent. And here's why. When you fight an upper level opponent and you do the shot wrong, if they don't hit your arm, they're being polite. If I don't smell the soup, even when my shield is in proper position, Sylvester is going to take, rip my arm off. But if I smell the soup, I'm coming across the center, I'm protected. Whether I do that at extreme range, whether I do that really close, I'm protected because I'm coming through the center. Whether I do it at a right foot lead, whether I do it at a left foot lead, I'm still throwing through the center so my arm is protected by my sword, but if I throw it wide, Sylvester hits my arm. Same motion for him, whether I block it, or throw my arm, or not. Speaking of right foot lead, people cheat. Let's rotate a little bit more this way. I want to get closer to Sylvester. If this is what I've been taught to work, and I'm a little out of range, I'm going to get a couple of inches by rotating at the hips, or just rotating at the hips without doing the feet. And what it does is it opens my entire body up, but yes, I get that extra two or three inches. You can get the same effect range-wise by just closing two or three inches, and this way you're not opened up. Now I can hit it. Before, I couldn't, unless I 
cheated and got closer with my feet. Taking this to its, ex its extreme, you're fighting from a right foot lead. You're essentially in a boxer stance because I'm maximizing my distance to, or minimizing my distance to him. No matter what I'm doing, I'm as close as I can get. And I'm taking my legs in a sense of saying, I'm at a range for you to hit. And I'm, what I'm going to do is if he jumps me trying to get that leg, doesn't matter which foot I go with, whether it's that one or I'm going to try and keep the range the same. You need to think about all these things when you do your pell work. You also need to have, we haven't done the, the hand yet, have we? Okay. Another one of the fine points, another couple of the fine points. If I death grip my sword, and I'm trying to hit Sylvester, this is as far as I can turn. I cannot turn anymore. Now look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave my shoulders exactly where they're at. You can see I can't go any further. But if I throw and loosen my, hand, my back two fingers, you can see I'm past Sylvester. And you're not just getting the reach with that, you're getting another joint to develop still more speed. Where you, you practice that and you get your finger and your death grip in earlier, you just have to be careful not to launch your sword. Use a lanyard, use a trigger. The other thing you have to do with your hand, again, we're at optimal range. I want to have my hand as high relative to my tip as possible. If I keep my hand low and my tip high, if I'm aiming at Sylvester's temple, he doesn't need to block this shot. It's already covered. But if I keep my hand high and my tip low, he has to make the block. The further he has to go to make that block, the more open the rest of, he, of him is for other things. So when you're doing your pell work, don't just stand there. Let's transition over to the pell. 